you need to learn how to brag about yourself. Like you need to. And that's another point of what are, what are the judges looking for? You need to be comfortable tooting your own horn without blowing it is what I say. How do you know how to toot your own horn without blowing it? That's why a strong internalized competitive drive is so important. And I promise you that if you can adopt that victor mindset, you will start to see solutions to problems rather than being overwhelmed by your problems. Because guess what? Newsflash. Everybody has problems. And so the enemy in your head is going to tell you, you're at a disadvantage. This can never happen. What I'm saying to you is, what are you going to do about it? Well, sit back and relax and enjoy this episode of the Powerhouse Podcast, the number one pageant podcast in the world. I'm your host, Coach Megan, two-time former Miss Nebraska, and now loving wife and CEO and in the ministry, all the things. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 questions about pageantry on the internet. Now, this is hilarious to me. I did some research, okay? There's a there's a really cool, actually, resource called Also Asked. Dot com. This is not an ad for them. And diving right into it, basically what you can do is you can type in like the word pageant, for example, and it will give you the top 100 actually things that people are searching for when it comes to pageants. So I'm going to pick 10 of them today. Maybe we can do a part two in the future. Um, and yes, I've got lioness hair energy today for the, all of our youtube watchers who are not audio podcasters they're they're visual podcasters as well and i was very fascinated by some of the questions that people came up with so i have prioritized these thinking of my audience because you guys know more about pageants than idiots on the internet <laughs> but so i'm gonna make sure that these the 10 that i picked are actually relevant to you guys it's not just like what is a pageant and also the parts of speech that people google is pretty funny if i do say so myself okay so the first question the the number one question when i typed in how to win a pageant okay so when i just typed in pageant it was like what's the number one british pageant and a bunch of these things that just don't apply to most of you so i picked questions that apply to most of you guys so the number one question when i typed in how to win a pageant the number one is what do pageant judges look for. Okay. And then there were 10 questions. I'm squinting my eyes because I'm looking, trying to read all of these at the same time. And so the, there were 10 questions underneath of this. One was how do you nail a pageant interview? Valid. Number two, how do you stand in a pageant interview? Three, what qualities should a title holder have? We're going to answer that. How tall do you have to be to be in a pageant? I can see why people would ask that. What is the dress code for pageant judges? Not relevant to you guys. What do you, what do you have to wear a dress to pageant, not to a pageant, just to pageant as a verb apparently. And how do you break a tie in a pageant? What qualities should a beauty queen possess? Okay. Can I just say, by the way, maybe this just bothers me, but I cannot stand when people call it beauty queen. I just feel like that is so, and I'm not like, I'm not like this kind of person that gets triggered by things easily, I would say. But when people are like, oh yeah, Megan does beauty pageants, I'm like, you just insulted my intelligence. Does anybody, is that just me or does anybody else feel that way? I don't know about you, but I just am like gritting through my teeth like, how nice for you, you don't get it, you know? And then my next thing is I'm, I'm always like, you try being a judge for five seconds, you wouldn't last because you would crumble. So anyways, love that for them. But okay. Continuing on, what quality should a beauty queen possess? What counts as a pageant appearance? Let's talk about that. How long do pageants last? I almost had a very witty comment that came out of my mouth there because of recent decisions of certain national pageants that have been just a little silly. So, okay, all coming out of what do pageant judges look for. So let's start with what do pageant judges look for, okay? And I'm actually going to parlay this with what qualities should a pageant queen possess because they're well they're kind of similar kind of different okay so this will be question number one question number two what do pageant judges look for what they look for unanimously is not a personality not a height a hair color and ethnicity none of that stuff matters okay what does matter is somebody that is charismatic even if that's an introvert that's charismatic which is totally possible i've talked about that a million times they look for someone that is detached from the result of winning because their identity is solid with or without the crown, even though they really want it. 
Judges look for someone with a strong competitive drive, but it's an internalized competitive drive. Let me dive deep on this one because there's a difference, okay? So a strong internalized competitive drive is different than an externalized competitive drive. What's the difference? Have y'all ever met somebody that just wants it really, 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 really bad and they're verbalizing that externally? They're word vomiting on other competitors. Even if they have totally the right heart, they're constantly talking about all the service work that they're doing and they're constantly talking about how hard they've worked this year and they just hired a trainer and they hired a this and they hired a that. And I'm all for it. I think you should hire me because I know how to help you, right? I think you should hire fitness coaches. I think you should hire nutritionists. Like, I believe in all those things, right? I have coaches. I have business coaches. I have mentors. I have pastors. I have coaches, blah, 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 okay? And so it's really important. But you don't hear me telling you every single detail about why I'm worthy to be your coach just because I have a business coach or everything that I'm doing. You know, like, there's, there's just a difference. There's a difference. Again, I always liken this to relationships because you are building a relationship with a judge from the second that they see your headshot in social media and paperwork before they ever get to speak with you. They are judging you. You are presenting yourself, which is why we focus so heavily on social media. And I shouldn't say so heavily, but like we actually focus on it (laughs) and we give you strategies for your social media being congruent with your paperwork, being congruent with your styling choices and all of that. And your headshot should look like you. Yes, it should look like a glam version of you. You should have a distinct style that is noticeable and repeatable, right? But the judges are looking for an it girl. And what that means is that your brand should be speaking. Let's make this number three, four, what are we on? That brand should speak. Loudly is not the word, but vividly is maybe the word, okay? But let's go back to the competitive drive for a second. So internalized competitive drive. Who has been around? All of you guys have, okay? And think about the girl who maybe won your last state pageant or your last national pageant. Even if they're not yappa, 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 yappa all the time about how they're going to win, da, da, da. In fact, the best competitors don't. Every once in a while, a girl wins who slips through the cracks, who's super, let's just say verbal about that, right? But for the most part, the most confident people, the people that are actually the best at their craft, I've noticed this in business my whole life, okay? Even academics, Okay, yes, there was that one annoying kid in your high school who talked about how smart they were and blah, 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 blah. But that external processing is typically actually indicative of insecurity. So it's not, what I'm not saying is don't talk about your accomplishments in your interview. Don't talk, you know, you need to learn how to brag about yourself. Like you need to. And that's another point of what what are the judges looking for? Like you need to be comfortable tooting your own horn without blowing it is what I say. How Do you know how to toot your own horn without blowing it? So that's why a strong internalized competitive drive is so important. There's an energy carried behind that. The judges are looking for somebody that moves mountains when she walks into a room, but she doesn't even have to speak to do it. It's her walk. It's her carriage. It's her sense of fashion. It's everything about her before she even speaks. That is a huge thing that no one talks about. It's a very high level skill. Because it's like, well, how do I get there, Coach Megan? Well, these are some of the things that we work on, right? I always say it's easier to get somebody from a D to a B than like a B to an A or an A to an A plus competitor. And that's why when we're working with our competitors who have made top 15, top 10, top 5, we're working on a lot of nonverbal skills as well as verbal skills. Brand is a huge part of it. Um, It's learning to think at the next level because until you can think at the next level, you can't act at the next level. And it's a lot of like psychology and sociology and human dynamics of the self and understanding yourself so well and living as a person of integrity, which is another thing that judges look for. Because when you're living in integrity with yourself, which means the things that I say I'm going to do, I do. The things that I do are the same things as what I say, right? I'm not talking behind my own back within my own head saying you're going to go to the gym today, then you don't right? I'd rather that you just tell yourself, I'm not going to go to the gym today and I'm going to relax. I'm going to watch Hallmark movies today. I'm going to enjoy myself, right? I'm going to choose to eat the ice cream or do the whatever. As opposed to always acting like kind of in this reactive state of your yes isn't yes and your no isn't no kind of a thing. And why does that matter? Because there's a sense of confidence and a sense of it factor that comes from people that just live in congruency, like period. They don't have to put a mask on, 
okay, now I'm pageant me, now I'm not pageant me, like that's exhausting and people can notice that. But the biggest thing out of this that I think we've talked about the least on this podcast is the strong internalized competitive drive, okay? Now, another thing I just want to touch on here, you know, I'm not sure, and maybe weigh in on this on our social media, I'm not sure that you can make someone competitive. I mean, I can't remember a time when I haven't been competitive, whether it was a board game with my family, whether it was playing basketball, whether it was wanting to get every lead in every musical, every solo, wanting to beat my own last GPA. I just have a strong internalized competitive drive. It's just the way God made me, right? So I'm not, you know, poo-pooing on anybody, but it's not anyone else's job but yours to lock in on the vision of what you want and deciding that you're going to go get it. I, I, as a coach, can't make you more passionate about winning blah, blah, blah than you. Th- that's your job, you know? And so it's also why we interview all of our coaching clients that we work with one-on-one via a strategy call, which if you haven't done one yet, please do it because you'll get a lot of value from it and clarity and also um, have an opportunity to work with us if you're the right fit. And what I see over and over with people that maybe aren't a right fit that, you know, we'll just say, hey, you know, God bless you. We'll send you in a different direction or maybe, hey, give it a year and come back to us. And and we've had people that have listened to the podcast for three plus years before they finally book a strategy call for one reason or another. And sometimes it, you know, they're like, oh, I should have done this two years ago. And then sometimes they're like, no, now's the right time. Like I just, I wasn't at the level of maturity and I didn't want it bad enough, you know? And sometimes something like a deadline like aging out or maybe a change in leadership is coming to the organization or several people this year that I've already talked to and we just opened applications this week, but several people that I've talked to are like, yeah, I'm graduating college and this is the year that I have to win or else I have to make major life decisions when it comes to moving from medical school or getting placed in a job or whatever that I will feel disingenuous actually competing for the pageant because I mean, they're going to have to compete in a different state or I just won't be able to give it my all like I will this year because it's perfectly kind of in between maybe when they're graduating and when they'd start a career and they can take a gap year or something like that. So anyways, but all that to say, like your strong internalized competitive drive comes from wanting it, you know, wanting to win. And there's a bunch of different things that we can talk about that relate to that, right? Because there could be some internal blocks, there could be some mental health stuff going on, like worthiness things. So that's why the first thing that we work on with all of our clients is mindset. Some need more mindset help than others. Some are rock solid and just need a little bit of tweaking. But that foundation of being able to accept great things for yourself and see yourself as the winner is the foundation of everything because otherwise we're building a house on sand and that's where people are oh fake it till you make it i'm like okay yeah to a certain extent you do have to act as if even when you don't emotionally feel the thing you still have to act the thing because we can't be ran by our emotions or else i mean that's a losing battle like you're just gonna you know oh it's cloudy okay well i'm just gonna be lazy today that's ridiculous tell your emotions how to think how to feel you know and tell tell your body no we're getting up and we're doing this thing today To a certain extent, right? I'm not talking about mental health. Like if you seriously have obviously depression, things like that going on, I'm not a therapist. So please go see somebody that can help you with those things. But that strong internalized drive comes from you making an absolute bona fide decision that this year is going to be different, that you're going to turn it on, that you're going to figure it out. But where maybe you've gone wrong in the past is you've been too laissez-faire about like, I just want to have fun. And some people, like if you're competing for the first time, you just want to have fun. Great. Love that for you. But after that, right, I think that some people lie to themselves because they're afraid to say that they want it. They're afraid to say, you know, to really dream about like, what could this look like if I were to win? Because they're potentially scared of the actions that they'll have to take and the change that that they'll have to undergo, even though that change will be the best thing for them. Because everything that you work on for pageants, when you do it the right way, makes you a better person overall. And why do I know that? Because it's been true in my life, my sister's life who never really did pageants growing up very much. I did a few. Allie never did any. And the hundreds of clients that I've taught over, you know, the last eight and a half years now. So what are pageants looking for? Those are the major things. They're also looking for somebody who likes and loves themselves and is physically fit and which looks like a lot of different things, but physically fit specifically for the industry and the competition that they're competing for and is generally good looking. Again, Beauty pageant, hate it, love it, whatever, it is it is a pageant where your looks matter, okay? So if you don't want your looks to matter and you don't want to work on them and you don't want to get good at hair and makeup, do something else. 
I'm just being honest because you're doing yourself a disservice to invest your time, energy, and money into something that you're not willing to work on when a portion of what you need to work on are just the requirements for doing well. And that's not me being mean, I promise you. Like this is me helping you because so often we we allow fear to keep us from the potential that actually really is in you. But it's just uncomfortable, right? It's uncomfortable to to admit I need to lose 20 pounds. It's uncomfortable to admit I have an addiction to food. That's what I had to do, right? And my brain was like, your body's broken. This is never going to work. Like, your body only knows how to gain weight. Blame it on this. Blame it on that. Blame it on this. Blame it on that. And I just had to take a hard look in the mirror where I was like, Megan, you're the problem, right? And of course, there are, sometimes there are hormonal issues going on. I had a lot of clients with PCOS, with estrogen dominance, with these different things, right? And I get that because I've dealt with that. But at the same time, we live in the information age where there are natural resources to fix a lot of those things for a few hundred dollars a month. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you from a decade of experience that when you want something, you will move mountains to go get it. And if you have already made the decision that you want to be your healthiest self, spirit, soul, and body, okay, and you want to be able to do X, Y, Z, then yeah, you're going to have to chop down some weeds in the forest as you walk and it's going to get uncomfortable and you're not going to be able to see the end destination. You just got to keep walking and chopping down trees as you get there. But it doesn't mean that there isn't an end destination for you and it doesn't mean that it's not possible. You just may not like the uncomfortability that it takes to get there. And then here's the other thing and I'm like really preaching now. Stop talking about other girls and diminishing how hard they've worked just because they beat you. I'm being honest. It it ticks me off more than anything when people diminish well, this girl's gotten first runner up every year and that's because she has daddy's money and that's because she does this, but I've done way more service than her. Okay, well, well, service is one aspect of competition, but it's not every aspect of competition. And jealousy doesn't look good on you. Can we just be honest? That's not cute. That's not what judges are looking for. Judges are not looking for a leader that makes excuses. Now, if we're talking privately and you're my client and you're venting because you're frustrated and because you're working super hard and you're having a moment where you're just like, I just need a vent right now. Now, Megan, slap me out the side of the face, remind me who I am and let's keep it going. That's one thing. And I totally get it. We need people to process with. And that's why we have coaches and mentors and people, right? I get that. But when that becomes a habit, when that becomes the excuse for everything, or just think of the excuses that you've said out of your mouth. Can we be honest? Can I be honest? Right? Oh, well, that's, it's, that's not fair that she has more resources. That's not fair that she doesn't have to work out as hard as I work out. And judges think that her body's healthier. What if they actually looked at my body versus hers? Da, 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 da. I get it. That sucks. And that is unfair. But what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Because guess what? You don't get to explain that to the judges. And if you tried, it would come across very poorly. It would come across like a victim rather than a victor. So I want you to start fighting from victory rather than trying to get to victory. I want you to start looking like and acting like, okay, when you go to the gym, act like you're already Miss New Jersey. Act like you're already Miss Minnesota USA. Whatever you have to do, act like you already have it and grab a hold of that future and say, how would Miss Minnesota USA work out right now? Even though I'm tired, even though this is happening, even though I'm feeling this way, what can I do, right? What is in my possession to, to be able to do right now despite the feelings that I'm having? And I promise you that if you can adopt that victor mindset, you will start to see solutions to problems rather than being overwhelmed by your problems. Because guess what? Newsflash. Everybody has problems. Skinny people have problems. Rich people have problems. Middle class people have problems. People on the West Coast have problems. People on the East Coast have problems. I have problems. You have problems, right? And so the enemy in your head is going to tell you, you're at a disadvantage. This can never happen. This just isn't meant for you. Da, 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 da. And my... What I'm saying to you is, what are you going to do about it? And if you genuinely think, which I've had in some cases, if you genuinely think that, like, for example, if you would have to massively alter who you are in some way or do something unhealthy to win the crown, then don't do it. Then why are you trying to compete for a crown in a system that maybe isn't your flavor of tea, but something else is, right? Sometimes we get so locked in to this is the only way to be validated, right? But if you 
are already validated with or without a crown, you're already a victory, you're already a success, then how does that person walk in? They walk in and they're like, the world's my oyster. What do I want to do? I can do anything. What do I want to do? Right? And I promise you, like, if you adopt that mindset, you'll just start to see life and work through life so differently. You'll attract different things in your life. You'll attract a higher level of things into your life. And you'll make more money. You'll have better relationships. Better people want to be around you. And therefore, the judges will also gravitate towards someone like you because positivity is a staple of a role model. It's so important. And it just, it can't be faked. It it really can't. You can for a moment, but it's pretty easy to see through. And people have a really high or low, depending on how you look at it, (laughs) BSometer today. They just do. Because so much in the world is fake. People are craving what is authentic and real, but also someone that is a superstar, that is at the top of their game, that they're like, other people will want to follow them. I want to be friends with her. I admire her. I respect her. I look up to her. And she's beautiful and talented and intelligent. Like, yeah, we have an interesting industry, right? Where we have to literally be it all, right? And at the same time, we get to share and be vulnerable too about the things that it took to get there, which is another huge thing that judges look for that a lot of particularly high achieving people fail at because they have no clue how to share their vulnerabilities. Probably the number one thing that I work on with Enneagram threes, pretty much always in some eights, they just, they have no balance of like, it's either all sob story or no sob story, or they're terrified of going there that could, they could be seen as miss sob story because they don't want to be known as that. And I'm like, who says it's black and white? Like you can be, you can show vulnerability and be strong at the same time. You just have to know the language patterns and practice exactly how to do it. That was 20 minutes just for one. We're not going to get through 10. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's pick some other ones. So how do you stand in a pageant interview? I I would say like 50% of pageants, 50% of pageants are sitting, 50% are standing. I like to switch between a T pose and like a regular shoulder width apart stance. I think your hands are way more important than your feet. The one thing not to do if you're watching on YouTube is like cross your feet like this while you're standing. Okay. So T pose, which is like a third position ballet style or your feet directly apart. Don't cross at the knee though. Like don't look like you have to pee for lack of a better term. Okay. Um, that shows nervousness. One of the biggest ways to show dominance is, is through an open stance and through being able to take up more space, facing people with your shoulders, go back and watch um, the episode on non- nonverbal communication. If you have more questions about that. Okay. That was question two. How tall do you have to be in a pageant? You know, things like Miss, what is it, Grand International, they have height requirements. I think one or two other major pageants do, but for the most part, I mean, I'm six feet tall and I've competed against, I would say, mostly shorter women, um, especially in the MAO system. Like, it definitely doesn't matter. I would say more people are shorter rather than taller. It's a mixed bag. So I wouldn't worry about that unless that particular pageant has a height requirement in America specifically you know, I I think it's more about taking up space. Like there can be a really tall person who has no idea how to take up space and they're super awkward. And you can have a five foot two girl that owns the stage in her super high heels and is rocking it, you know, because of her big personality and how she does things. So I think it's tailored per person. What do you have to wear? Do you have to wear a dress to a pageant? I don't know if this means attending one, I always wear pants because I don't really like wearing dresses. I'll wear like a jumpsuit or something. But yes, evening gown, I think that's kind of a dumb question. Let's move on. Um, How do you break a tie in a pageant? Good question. So in an instance where there is a top five ballot, that's why they have those in the case of a tie. Typically, there will be written in rules that there like isn't a top five where they say whoever has the higher interview score will ultimately win the pageant. It could be talent can be whatever. But typically those are in the judging bylaws, like if there was truly a tie. And then, I mean, I I would imagine that like that's why you would have five judges rather than four or something. So the math would math correctly where it's impossible to truly have a tie. If you're really concerned about that, I would dig deeper with your executive director and figure that out. A great question. What counts as a pageant appearance? Um, I've actually had a lot of questions about this week randomly. And I don't know if counts is the right word. You know, if you're just taking a picture by a random sign on the side of the road, that's not an appearance. I would count an appearance as something that can create a story afterward that you can actually talk about how you made an impact. And if you weren't there long enough to make an impact or to have a story of some kind, 
And I guess you could count that as an appearance because you literally made an appearance, but you didn't make an appearance, if that makes sense. So I always booked my schedule and I encourage my clients to book their schedule around places they can have an impact, place that you can talk, you can sing the national anthem, you can perform in some way that people know that you're there. You're not just smiling and waving. Now, with preteens and, and younger girls and things like that, I, I get it. But especially if you're 13 or older and you're really busy, like I would try, for the most part, go to appearances where, like I said, you're able to speak or, or make an impact in some way. How long do pageants last? Sometimes six hours, if you know what I'm saying. And for certain competitions, when you put everything on one night, what is a good pageant talent? Well, this definition is changing. A lot of people don't know that pretty much only Miss America and Miss Volunteer America now have talent. I wish more had talent. That's just me being somebody who enjoys performing in talent. But yeah, the definition of talent is changing. In the America system, obviously, you can do a her story monologue now, which is cool. You know that that has to be represented equally. But what makes for a good pageant talent is something that is equally intellectually stimulating and technically proficient as well as entertaining and when that is not balancing you either get all entertainment and showmanship but there's not enough technique for me to give you a high enough score especially if you know you're somebody with some kind of a musical or creative background I think it's hard to put bias away when you know somebody's been practicing the violin for four hours a day for 18 years and then somebody else tries to do something that they've done for five seconds, like it's just going to be incomparable unless you work really hard. And that's just being honest because I think a lot of musicians know how long it took them to work on their craft, right? So there's an appreciation in some aspect or dancers or whatever. So that's where it's really important to still find some kind of technicality aspect and um, as well as inter entertainment value. And that's where I think music can help a lot in terms of your backing track. How can I be more confident in a pageant? I think we're on what? Is this question seven, six or seven? How can I be more confident in a pageant? This is obviously, we have a billion episodes about this, so it's more than I can answer in like 10 seconds, but how can I be more confident? It starts with being confident in your everyday life. It starts with acting as if, I always tell the story of how when I was in college, I couldn't even look the guys in the, in the eyes when I was walking past them, like the hot, tall basketball guys, because I was so nervous to even feel worthy enough to make eye contact. So other little things that I did was, you know, just get control of the things that made me not feel confident. <clears throat> so like me not knowing how to do my hair and makeup stifled my confidence. Me not knowing how to control my weight stifled my confidence. So sometimes I think it's working on those other things that trouble us that we actually can learn and can be in control of. And then the other part of that, there is an acting as if element and working on yourself and and listening to podcasts and picking up, you know, little tools here and there, like just little victories every day and, and practicing being confident even before you really feel it, you know, learning social intelligence and emotional intelligence, liking yourself, which I think there is an external and an internal component. I think there's also a component of people say, know your worth. It's like, okay, well, how do I know my worth? Part of that is like understanding my personality, understanding what I'm good at, becoming good at something becoming the top of the barrel at something. Like when you have a certain skill set that you feel like is viable in society, I think it gives you confidence to be the best at something, you know? And so universally, if you look at people that are confident, they're either really funny and that's their thing, or they're really talented in some way, they're really intelligent in some way. And all of you guys can get there in some aspect, right? And so that's where like in our coaching, we do a ton of like gift assessments where it comes to personality and just all these different things so that you can understand yourself so well that you can you can gauge kind of like what that could be for you in terms of your brand and what you bring to the table. Question seven slash eight. Let's see. How do you master a pageant talk? Let's just say that this is like what you say at an appearance. So I always tell my clients to create a keynote speech, 25 to 30 minutes that they could give at an elementary school, a middle school, a high school, and a college. And it's really important to know the nuances and the differences of how you change your tonality, how you change how you deliver a message, even if it's the same message, because of who's in the room. Why does this matter? Because when you're in a room with judges who are oftentimes probably going to be 25 to 65, okay, you need to know how to read the room. Again, that's social intelligence, emotional intelligence. You need to know, okay, with this set of five people, how, how am I going to pique their interest, capture their emotions, and captivate their heart 
in a different way that I would deliver this information for an elementary school student. And so that's one of my favorite things to practice. And that's where going to schools, appearances, businesses, after school clubs, all that kind of stuff is a great practice ground for rocking your interview. What according to you is the most important part of a beauty pageant? I think they're all important. I think it's a fallacy that you can focus on one area more than the other and expect to win. You know, even USA just upped interview to 50%. So you can't skate by anymore with just body being 66% of your score and walk. And I'm excited about this direction. I, I think more than ever, you have to be your own brand inside and out and you have to rock every phase of competition or else you're just leaving points on the table and allowing someone else to surpass you because they worked on everything and you didn't. How long does it take to prepare for a pageant? At least six months, I would say. Like, start thinking about things to a year, I would say. Yeah, for the most part. Last one. Kind of funny that people wonder about this. Can Miss Universe have tattoos? Apparently, the world wants to know this. And yes, they can. In fact, I want, I want to say... I know for sure like our USA contestants that have even done well have had tattoos. Someone should look that up if a Miss Universe has actually had tattoos though. I'm not 100% sure on that, but interesting question. So that's it for the top 10 questions, you guys. Again, if you haven't booked your strategy call yet, we'll put the links uh, below for that. You can go to sessions.powerhousepageantry.com forward slash chat, or you can DM us the word hire on um, Powerhouse Pageantry Instagram, and I'll help you set that up, or our team will help you set that up. It's been a pleasure speaking with you guys today, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.